When it comes to concrete, we've got you covered. RowPaint.com offers custom concrete coating services for your garage, business, warehouse, and more. And we do it in one day. We are your complete concrete coating solution. This is Bronco Nation News Live. The best interviews, the most informed opinions, the latest breaking news, all from the top Boise State insiders. Now, here's four-time NSMA Idaho Sports Writer of the Year, B.J. Reigns, with another edition of Bronco Nation News Live. Right now, Lithia Ford of Boise is buying used vehicles. How much you want for the SUV? Uh, I don't know. Well, Lithia Ford will give you more than that. How much more? More than you think. I'm not thinking anything. I'm thinking you might get even more than that. See how much more you can get at Lithia Ford of Boise. Hey, what's going on, Boise State fans? Happy Wednesday to you. That's right. They haven't kicked us off yet. The Winston Venable Show back for episode three. My name is BJ Rains, Bronco Nation News here at BroncoNationNews.com, all the social media channels. If you're watching us on YouTube, that's the best way. Go ahead, as the YouTubers say, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, help uh, help us out uh, from that standpoint. We're trying to build up the subscribers on the YouTube channel. But uh, Winston Venable, fresh off his uh, appearance Monday night on our subscriber-only show, is back for his weekly appearance here. And Winston, excited to have you on, man. How's it going? Oh, doing great, BJ. A little Wednesday action. You got game week. So uh, I know we spoke on Monday, but hey, we're that much closer to game day. So it's, uh, it's a good feeling over here. It is. It is. And we're going to talk about, I think uh, you, you, you obviously want to play to your strengths and your wheelhouse here. And you're obviously very familiar with George Helani in this running back room. So I want to spend a lot of, that was kind of the talk this week of uh, George Helani and his usage last season and, and you know, his usage this season. So I do want to spend most of the show talking about that. Uh, but just in general, man, Wednesday of game week, when you go through fall camp for three, four weeks and you keep tackling the same person and doing the drills, and I'm sure that second or third week, it seems like fall camp's never going to end, man. But when you get that to game week and you get to that you know middle of game week and that game plan is pretty much in and you're you know just at this, you know, today's probably the Wednesday, kind of the last hard practice before uh, Thursday and Friday and, and you get on the plane here in 48 hours. What's, what's that feeling like in the building right now, man? Basically, you know, three days away from – from kicking off a season after having, you know, seven, eight months of off-season work. Yeah, you said it, man. Just kind of like in the real world here, you know, a lot of people use that term, that hump day, that Wednesday being that hump day, and just kind of get on that tail end of the the second half of the week. So similar for a football team, similar for Boise State, you know, I think Coach Avalos had that whole mindset to go really hard during the week, in the beginning of the week, and then make sure to taper off a little bit and get more mental reps um, you know, to make sure the bodies are feeling fresh and ready to go, you know, Friday and Saturday. So uh, Wednesday, last little hard practice there. Sometimes you're in pads early in the year, maybe taper off that late in the season. But I would expect those guys are in pads and then uh, shutting things down Thursday and Friday and getting ready to roll. Hey, we are broadcasting from the uh, Cutwater Canned Cocktail Studios. Make sure you pick up a uh, Cutwater Canned Cocktail. Uh, it'll be perfect to enjoy during Saturday's game. You don't have to worry about mixing it together and having the different ingredients in all of this. You can get a perfectly made cocktail right there at uh, your nearest grocery store or gas station. Make sure you pick one up. Uh, they're very affordable. You can get like two for seven bucks, and, and uh, they're, they're just awesome. So make sure you check out uh, Perfect Game Day Drink, Cutwater Canned Cocktails. And also, Winston, we still got a couple uh, gift cards left, Pro Image. $25 to the Pro Image uh, Blue and Orange stores, either one. If you want to get a Boise State gear, you go to the Blue and Orange store at the mall or online, or you can go to Pro Image if you would rather get like an NFL or a NBA hat or jersey. All you got to do is sign up for a uh, year subscription of Bronco Nation News and help us pay Winston's massive salary here. Uh, <laughs> it is $1.35 a week is what it comes out to. But uh, you just sign up for a full year, give us a one-time fee, we'll drop the uh, gift card in the mail, and I'll make a special offer today, Winston, anyone that signs up today, I'll also throw in a, a free round of golf out at Timberstone Golf Ooh. Course, so uh, out in Caldwell, I got a, a number, a few of these left, so if you sign up today, 
You get the gift card to Pro Image, and you also get a free round at Timberstone Golf Course. That's basically worth more than the uh, $70 subscription by itself with those two together. So just go to BroncoNationNews.com, sign up for the one-year subscription, and we'll drop both of those uh, gift cards to you uh, in the mail. We got some comments rolling in. Don't tell Prater, Jay, Johnny, or Bowser, but uh, Winston's show has become my favorite on Bronco Nation News. Hey, we'll take it, Jordan. Right on, man. <laughs> your, your card's in the mail, too, Jordan, for the kind words. Yeah, we uh, we appreciate it. But uh, I do want to spend a lot of this show talking about George Helani. We heard this week, and we're going to hear in a second and play in a second, some clips from Coach Avalos and primarily Coach Tim Plow, the offensive coordinator, Winston, talking about last year. You know, you obviously didn't have him for a couple games, and even when you did have him, there weren't too many games where you could just unleash him at full strength. Um, I, I guess – as being around him the last couple of years, knowing what he can do, I guess how different, first of all, is a full strength George Helani from a limited or out George Helani? And, and what would a George, a healthy George Helani mean to the offense this year? Yeah, I think you can see, you know, some, from some of our statistics last year when George was in the game and, and when he wasn't, um, there's a difference out there. I mean, he's, he's an incredible football player and, you know, like we're talking about when healthy, right? So, um, you got to be out there and you got to be performing and, and that's going to really help the Broncos offense get that run game established, which helps their mentality and confidence. So uh, having a strong running back group, having a, a core guy there like George Helani healthy can be really the difference. He is a difference maker out in the field and he can be the difference come down to uh, establishing the run game for the Broncos, which is huge. Now, the first quote we're going to hear from Andy Avalos in a second, he said, we all know the numbers, uh, what the numbers say when George is in the game and, and when George gets a certain amount of touches. So I went and looked it up just to make sure we knew what the numbers were. George Helani has played in 26 games at Boise State. When he plays in the game and he's gotten at least one carry in every game that he's played. So when George Helani plays those 26 games, Winston, Boise State, 21 and 5. 21 and 5, when all George Lani has to do is get one carry in the game, 21 and 5. When he can get to 100 yards rushing in a game, that's happened seven times. Boise State is 7 and 0 when George Lani rushes for 100 yards. Now you bring it down a little bit, so let's go 75 yards, all right? If you can get to 75 yards in a game, Boise State, the past three seasons, 9 and 1 when George Lani can get to 75 yards. You know what? Maybe 75 is too high. Let's just go to 40 yards. How about 40? Mm -hmm. Rushing yards. George Shalani should get 40 rushing yards every game, right? When George Shalani gets 14 or 40 rushing yards, Boise State is 16 and 2. 16 and 2 in games the last three years where George Shalani just has to get 40 rushing yards. Two other numbers that I think stand out 5 and 0 when he scores a rushing touchdown, which, by the way, he's played in 26 games and he only has five games where he has a rushing touchdown is, is crazy to me. But 5 and 0, so never lost when he rushes for 100 yards. Never lost when he scores a rushing touchdown. And maybe the one that stands out the most, Winston, they're 21-5 and five when he plays. They're just 5-3 and three when he doesn't play. So uh, I think it's pretty obvious that if you get George Solani in the game and he's healthy, he's going to do some big things. But if, if you get him going and get him some yards, I mean, the formula is pretty simple. When George Solani is healthy and plays, this team wins a lot of games almost every time they play. Yeah, I mean, it, it does everything. You're managing the clock. You're opening up the pass game. You're keeping the defense off the field. I mean, there's so many factors that go into it when you're running the football and establishing a run game. So those numbers are really incredible to hear. Uh, great job doing the homework there and, and breaking that down. I mean, it was uh, – I bring, I bring it for the Winston Venables show every hey, day, man. That, no, that, those, are, those statistics will bring some light to that situation for sure. So, uh, like we said, it, it's important being able to run the football and – Running the football when everybody knows you're running the football, that's what great teams can do. So, um, you know, like I said, I'm sure that there was George Helani with 100-yard rushes and then also that freed up the pass game and got some receivers, some touchdowns in those those wins as well. No doubt about it. And I'm going to have – we're actually talking to George Helani today. He's going to speak to the media uh, around noon this, today, and then uh, I'm going to have a story up this afternoon for for subscribers uh, looking at these numbers and Tim Plow and, and what uh, George says. So we'll expand on this more on the website later today. I want to ask you about his usage last year, but first let's, let's hear from Andy Avalos and Tim Plow and Hank Bachmeyer uh, talking about George Helani last year. Uh, not being 100%, not being able to go full go, and then this year the difference that that hopefully will make and then the plan for him this year. We all know what the numbers say when George is in the game and when George gets a certain amount of touches. And um, 
obviously uh, that's a tremendous help to have George be able to go. We're in a little bit different situation starting off last year going into this first game. And uh, it's, it's really nice to see 24 out there all the time. Mike, don't say the word pitch count. That's the, that's the word that just gets me. Too many pitch, too many pitch counts last year. Uh, no, I, there's no pitch count. I think a, a lot of that last year had to do with that, that word uh, that Mike mentioned earlier that I don't want to repeat. Um, so we were trying to – sometimes we only could play George a certain amount of plays. I mean, I, about 80% of the games last year we had, you know, we couldn't play him the, the entirety of the game. We had to keep a certain play count. And uh, those were times where we could say, you know what, this guy's really good at this. That's a way for us to save these play numbers for, uh, for George. But we're not taking George out of the game uh, unless we have to. Right, that he's one of the best players, um, I think, in the conference, and and uh, if we need to get a yard, very confident George can do that. I mean, it means a lot of great things. I mean, uh, he's a baller. You know, I love George. We we've, we've known each other for a long time now, and uh, he is special. You know, you guys all see it every time he, he's out there. Every time you guys ask me about him, I say, you know, same kind of thing. He's special. So, you know what? I mean, I'll tell you what. I, uh, George is pretty steady now. I mean, what you see is what you get all the time. And he is, uh, you know, you talk about being a competitor. Uh, he's the type of guy that you got to pull back sometimes, which you would, you would want it that way and try, instead of trying to get a guy going. And so um, obviously he's going to have it, as we all will here on, we'll have a huge challenge in this first week with, you know, the amount of starters coming back on the defense that we're about to face. And, uh, um, you know, we're, we're excited, though, about where he's at and the things that he's done throughout this fall camp. Why would we take George out of the game if we don't have to? And if we're taking him out, we feel like we have a pretty um, unique, special talent behind him uh, that'll do some good things too. So those two guys are healthy. They're going to play a lot. But um, I would say I want to say again that the guys behind them had great camps and would be shocked if they don't contribute in some way this season for us. You know, George is going to carry our offense, and I think everyone that knows us, that's what it's going to start. Start with him, but. It's great to have a guy that can come in and bring some electricity and, and uh, be a guy that can change things quickly. So a lot of the things George can do, Ashton can do already at that age, which is tremendous. Um, but again, he's a young guy. We can't forget that he's a freshman and we're going to have to build his confidence as the season goes. Um, but that's going to be quite the one-two punch um, with those two guys. I think that there's just a confidence that he's going to get yards and you're never going to be in a negative situation. So I think that it puts a lot of confidence in, in uh, the offense and in the team. Well, there you go. Hank Bachmeyer, uh, Andy Avalos, and Tim Plough talking about uh, George Lani. Take us, take us back to last year, Winston. Take us back in that locker room, in the meeting rooms, in the trainers' meeting rooms. I mean, what, how, how, what, what was that like uh, in terms of going into a game? You know, what did they tell you guys in terms of this is how many plays you can play them? And, and how did that, you know, is that why we saw, like, it sounds like that's why Van Buren became kind of the goal line back or the short yardage back because there was no point to waste one of the 15 plays or whatever with George if one of those guys could get it. And then you got them involved, and it worked out well for them too. But uh, what was it like last year having George Helani on the uh, dreaded pitch count? Yeah, I think I think really when it comes down to it, it's uh, you have to take care of your players. Uh, the players are the most important uh, you know, you go out there and compete and you want to win football games. And, and that's, that's big time and important itself, but you can't put these guys in a bad position. So I think when it comes down to it, you know, if, if the trainers and the coaches are collabing during staff meetings and, um, and you talk to the player too, and see how they feel where, where it comes down to, do we need to limit this guy's reps during practice during a game? So that was just a constant battle with with George and due to some injuries and things where you just had to have those conversations. And we never want to we always want to have the best interest for the players. So it's kind of like, you know, George is probably going to be safe with his conditioning, with where he's at, with conditioning through the week. Come game day, he's probably about 25 snaps or 30 snaps or 15 snaps. And you're looking to gradually increase that. But the last thing you want to do is get a guy hurt out there and it being selfish that you're trying to put your best player on the field and he's only at 80% with a hamstring or whatever is going on. And you're going to get that in more jeopardy. So I uh, definitely think that that's just kind of the mindset with the trainers and the coaches. It's a big collaborative deal. 
and you just got to make sure you're making the right choice. And that's, that's for the player. And if it's any medical concern, you got to, you got to play with caution. So a lot of that ha had to happen with George last year. And that was kind of a little bit of the story there. So was there basically just a set number going into each game? Okay, this game is 20, this game is 25, and you just had to – somebody's keeping a tally, and when it got to that number, he was done for the game? Or what was that like trying to manage that? Yeah, you got it, man. I mean, definitely uh, we have some support staff there at Boise that is going to – the pitch count or play count, uh, whether Prater or, or Plow, however they want to say it, that's what it is. It's, you know, high alert. You know, George is getting to that certain number, so you got to be very selective with – how you're playing him, what plays, and you go into the game knowing, hey, you got your your sheet. It's like these plays in green, you know, these 20 calls are, are George Halani. So if they get called, you know, let's throw them in there and then maybe you sprinkle them in a little bit more here and there to, to reach that limit. But yeah, you'd go into each game with a certain amount of plays and, and uh, manage it with some support staff and a lot of communication with Plow and the offensive coaches on the headsets to, you know, where your players at, how they feeling, what reps do we have, all those type of situations. So, so, uh, you know, last year you didn't even play in the UCF game. You guys had, didn't have Halani, and I think Shakir was on the pitch count in that game against uh, UCF. You, you get up 21-0 or whatever it was, and then the second half, whether it's because of the snap counts or whatever else, some things happen. Uh, they come back, and obviously UCF wins that game. And so that's what Andy Avalos was saying. Hey, last year we didn't even have George in the first game. Yeah. Uh, so thinking about going on the road, Oregon State, revamped offensive line, and George Talani with no limitations. Now, I, I, let's caution ourselves. It's not like they're going to give him 50 carries or something in the first game of the season. Yeah. But but to not have to have you know somebody keeping track with a clicker over here and, and somebody yeah. you know, not having to worry about that in the game plan, just to say, hey, if the game call, I think I think uh, 28 carries, if I looked it up, was the career high for George, and he's only had over 20 in six games. So he typically gets in the 15 to 20 range anyway. Um, but, I mean, it, to not have to worry about that and just say if the game calls for him to get 26 carries, he gets 26 carries. Or if it's 13, it's 13. What does that do for Tim Plow's play calling? What does that do for the offense? And, and just in general, to have George at their disposal, however they want to use him, how big of a deal is that Saturday? Oh, it's huge. Yeah, it's, it's it's huge. Now, let's not get this mistaken here. George Helani is is one of the best players at Boise State. So anytime you got your best player out there in the field, uh, it's going to help the Broncos. Anytime he's not out in the field, yeah, that's going to be a challenge now. I mean, and that is what it is. George is, is, a, is a big time player for the Boise State Broncos. So that frees up the offense. And I, I think when it comes down to it, if you can establish that run game, um, Plow's going to keep calling runs, keep calling runs. Now, if they start dropping another safety in the box, sorry, Hank's going to have that recognized, and here comes the pass game. So um, it, it, it's going to be here nor there as far as what it looks like as far as George getting 15 to 25. If they're going to give him a look, a light a light box, and the, the run game is looking good where George can take 25 carries, Coach Plow's going to call 25. So Are we – Oh, sorry to cut you off. We got a couple of questions uh, about uh, Elion Noah being added, and we'll get to that in a second, as well as uh, Ash and Genty. But I did have a comment here. Uh, can't wait to check out Sky High Brewing on Friday with uh, BSU fans. That's right. If you're going to uh, Corvallis on Friday, we'll be at Sky High Brewing. It says 5 to 8. We'll actually be there closer to 4 to 8 because they open at 4. We're going to try to bum rush the door and uh, reserve some tables when they open. So if you can come a little earlier, if you're in town in Corvallis in time, that'd be great. But we'll, uh, we'll try to be there from 4 to 8. Uh, hopefully they won't be too packed and they'll have some spots for us. But uh, come on by, have a drink, hang out. This is not an official thing with Sky High Brewing. They just said you're welcome to come and try to get some tables. So we'll be there. We'll try to have at least one uh, Bronco Nation News banner somewhere so you can see where we're at. We'd love to meet some of you and hang out. Uh, my wife and son will be there. I'm sure my wife would love to meet all of you as well and enjoys the interactions on social media and stuff. So uh, come on out. We'll have some prizes, a BNN shirt. We should get a – wish I had an autographed Winston Venable uh, picture or something we could give away here. We'll, we'll save that for a future event. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be there 4 to 8 on Friday, downtown uh, Corvallis, Sky High Brewing. And, uh, again, we'll try to have some prizes or some shirts or some things we can pass away. So hopefully uh, we will uh, see you guys all there. Uh, Winston, so, you know, Ashton Genty, we talked about him you know, last week or the week before for a good chunk of the show, his recruitment yeah. and how you guys got him and everything. But we've seen the picture. We put it on the screen last week. We've now heard about uh, everything that he's done. I think, you know, George Helani, 
rushed for 1,000 yards as a true freshman, but he started third on the depth chart that season. It took Robert Mahone, you know, fumbling, Andrew Van Buren fumbling, you know, get some injuries, and, and he kept working his way in, and he ended up rushing for 1,000 yards as a true freshman. So it's not crazy to think that uh, Ashton Genty could have, you know, a major role, uh, you know, behind Helani or, or, you know, knock on wood is available if something happens to George again injury-wise. But uh, what do you make, you know, just kind of hearing it's going to be a one-two punch and hearing that uh, Ashton has had a really strong fall camp. They've got him – you know, maybe doing some of the return game as well to try to get the ball in his hands more. Maybe he can be that guy that does some of the fly sweeps and things out of the slot that, you know, that uh, they missed now that Shakir's gone. But but just what do you make of them trying to figure out some ways here as a true freshman to get the ball in Ashton Gentry's hands? Yeah, I think you hit it. Um, cr- being creative. Coach Plow's offense already is pretty creative, and I'm sure with a guy like Gentry, um, it's becoming more creative, fly sweeps, lining them up as a receiver, things like that. I mean, he played wide receiver in high school quite a bit. So uh, he's a versatile player that's going to be utilized in that offense. I would say with Genty, it's just a, you know, it's going to be a matter of that experience, right? So that one-two punch uh, sounds good, looks good. Uh, he hasn't played a college football game yet. So training camp, fall camp with the Broncos, I think we already knew coming in, hey, this kid out of recruitment is, is a guy that could – could play right away. And that's what we were telling him. You know, a lot of his family members were wondering, like, is this a situation where he's going to be able to compete for, to play? And it's like, oh, yeah, for sure. So I think all that's panning out. And uh, we're just going to see. I, I have uh, a lot of thought that that Ashton Gentry is going to make his way through the Mountain West pretty, pretty nicely and, and be a factor for the Broncos, but hasn't showed anything yet as far as an actual game. So we'll wait and see on Saturday. Hey, United Commercial Insurance. Check them out, unitedcommercialinsurance.com. They are a local company here based in the Treasure Valley, big supporters of the Broncos, but they um, are uh, available in 44 states around the country to write uh, business insurance. So uh, check them out. Quick call could save you hundreds of dollars, unitedcommercialinsurance.com. If you're looking for a dentist, check out my guy, Dr. Chris Minard. He's our family dentist. Love him. He does a great job. BoiseDentistryCo.com. Locations across the Treasure Valley. You can give him a call, 906 1255 get more information and again dr minor and his staff just do a tremendous job full family dentistry they can do kids your grandparents whoever so make sure you check them out if you're looking for a career change now this could be anything from driving the big rig you see on the screen there to driving one of those amazon trucks going through your neighborhood uh, tcs can help you out uh, to get all the permits all the things you need and get out there uh, towing that first load in no time so uh, look, check them out transportation compliance service every step of the way they'll get you all the permits and things like i said that you need to get out there if you're uh, truck driving Uh, It's a very lucrative career right now in the pandemic, so make sure you check them out. And, uh, of course, our friends at Ridley's Family Markets as well. ShopRidley's.com, 13 Idaho locations. Find the one nearest you at ShopRidley's.com. they got the at-home shopping, the Skip app, the home delivery, all that great stuff. So make sure you check out Ridley's Family Markets. Uh, We had a question in here, uh, Winston, about uh, adding in – Elion Noah, and obviously you weren't a part of that. He just came in when camp started here uh, right before camp. But uh, what do you think the thought process was behind signing him, bringing him in? Uh, is this his only year of eligibility? I believe he has two years uh, at least. So. Um, he says, I'm sure he'll be extra help for the Utah State prep on the scout team. Uh, I mean, I'll answer the first part of this. I think it just came down to depth. I mean, they lost uh, Taquan Tyler right before camp started due to personal reasons. Uh, you don't have a lot of depth there. Uh, you're, you're counting on a true freshman in Genty and, and, and T. Crow who, you know, has shown some things but doesn't have a big workload and and obviously came in as a walk-on. So from my perspective, uh, Jordan, it's just you needed depth badly and he just happened to be available. And it was almost like a, a, uh, you know, early Christmas present to still have a guy like that available two days before camp started. Uh, And it makes it pretty cool that his brother plays on the team also. I mean, I I assumed the day I saw Noah was going in the transfer portal that he'd end up at Boise State to play with his brother. I don't know what took so long, but uh, a spot opened up and it worked out. But uh, what do you make of – of bringing in Noah. And, you know, it's kind of interesting on the depth chart. They only listed uh, Holani and Genty. Usually they list three or four guys. They only listed those two, which I think in part because they expect those two guys to get the lion's share of the carries, but uh, having Crow and having now Noah, uh, what do you make of the depth uh, at running back? Yeah, I think it, I think it added a uh, tremendous depth to the room. Cause he is a guy like we just talked about with Genty with, you know, no experience or, you know, fall camp experience, if you want to call it that. But, um, you know, Noah has played in some games. He has got some touches at Utah State. So he's put on the jersey on game day and he's been in front of crowds and um, all those nerves and excitement for a freshman. He's already gone through those. He's providing depth with T. Crow. So um, I think that's a great thing for the running back. And like you said, 
Uh, there was obviously a, a number that opened up, uh, a need for that position, and they went and hit it right on the head and got a great, great brother in uh, in the Noah family there. And it's a no brainer. You know, if he's anything like his bro, I'm sure they're uh, they're happy in there at uh, in for the Broncos. Uh, Rudy's saying don't sleep on Caden Dudley. He made Ooh, the switch yeah. over to running back uh, as well. Nate Staley says he's a uh, bold prediction. Genty rushes for 800 plus yards this season. Now that could be a good or bad thing. Cause I, you know, if George plays all 12 games and gets his thousand yards, I'm not sure you get Ashton all the way to 800. Uh, but uh, I mean, I think the, the point is the same, I guess that he expects big things from Ashton this year. Hey, how many is George Halani getting Nate? Let me ask you that. Yeah, if he's getting 800, then yeah, then we'll, we'll see. Uh, there's a question here. Oh, by the way, uh, we got a John Tarlis fan uh, chiming in from Greece. Um, appreciate that. Thanks for watching. In, in, we've been in Australia. Now we've been over in Greece. So we appreciate all the, the worldwide reach that Bronco Nation News uh, has here. Thank you for watching, uh, sir, uh, Mr. Tarlis. Uh, yeah. And um, always, I think he came on before and always appreciate when he's able to uh, jump on. Um, Anthony Locksmith wants to know what role does analytics have in the football preparation during game week? Um, how big, you know, baseball's huge into analytics now with spin rate and all this stuff on the pitches. Does, yeah. do you guys do, do football coaches get into the analytics at all or, or what's kind of, how does the numbers and that kind of stuff play into the game plan and the prep and all that? Yeah. You know, I think that's just, you know, baseball, like you said, it's huge and I think they depend on it. They study it. They learn from it. All those type of things. I think in football, it's just starting to get going. Um, some of these analytics and numbers and situational stuff that coaches are using the book to find out, you know, what's this situation tell, you know, in all these different scenarios. So it, it, I don't know enough staffs and I haven't been around enough other programs or know enough coaches and had that talk and, um, you know, been versed on this subject as far as the analytics and football. But um, not quite as big as baseball and just starting to work their way into the, the programs and being utilized. So they came back with a combined for Ashton and George, 1700 plus. Uh, he says uh, the running game gets back on track this year. Chris V chiming in. Halani goes 1100 rushing 400 plus receiving. So he's got 1500 that year in uh, 2019. I think it was about 200 uh, receiving yards as a true freshman uh, for George Halani. So uh, yeah, that would be, I think if uh, you could sign up Andy Avalos and company right now for 1,100 plus rushing yards, 400 plus receiving yards, they would say, "Where do we sign?" Right? Yeah, yeah, I think that'd be a, <laughs> that'd be a great year right there. <laughs> we got a couple minutes left, Winston. Uh, let me make sure I didn't miss any comments from earlier. Um, okay, so without injury, how how do you work in other running backs in place of your bell cow? So if it does sound like George is going to get the lion's share of the carries. How do you how do you keep the other guys involved? I mean, you guys did the short yardage thing to get Andrew involved. Uh, there's some other ways you can try, but if it sounds like George is going to just be George and go, and maybe Genty gets some action, how do you keep guys like Crow and Noah involved if if, if it's likelihood that they're not going to play very much? Yeah, well, you know, playing football is a, is a tough sport. It's a tough game, so George is he's going to need a breather. You can't work the guy the the whole day. Um, you're hoping that he gets a lot of carries and is having a successful day and, and you, you need a breather. So um, simply put, sometimes guys are gassed. They're working their tails off. They're playing a lot of reps. They need a breather. I mean, defensive line rotates some, you know, linebackers sometimes rotate. I mean, there's guys out there in the field that are, are working really, really hard. So uh, through a rotation, just, you know, on a need basis for George because he needs a little breather. I think other guys could get in. And then there may be some situational stuff um, that does pop up where it's, you know, two backs in the backfield. Uh, maybe there's a certain set when it's two backs and, you know, George is playing receiver. You never know. So there's multiple per personnel. There's multiple formations. Uh, there's creativity on that offense. So I think they'll find other ways to get those guys involved. And if not, uh, George is the guy, and when he needs a break, somebody else has got to go in. Nate says he's heartening back to the 2009-2010 years where thunder and lightning of Avery and Martin. So if they could get that that uh, with Ashton and Helani, that would be certainly nice. Yeah, no doubt. Throw DJ Harper in the mix there and Matt Kaiserman. And, uh, yeah, we, we had some good group then.
So uh, as we kind of wrap this up, Winston, uh, you know, the first game, I know the, everyone likes to say it's just one out of 12 games. Everything's the same and all this. But when you're coming off a 7-5 and five season last year, the fan base is, you know, ready to get behind this team, ready. You, know, you obviously want to do much better this year. A big Pac-12 team on the road, whether, you know, forget conference realignment, all that stuff, just just the opportunity to get a nice marquee win here early in the season. How, how big is the first game? How, how big is Saturday just to set the tone for this season uh, they got a couple winnable games after this. So if you win Saturday, the likelihood is you can be, you know, 4-0 and going into some conference games against San Diego State, Fresno State, maybe get back in the top 25, get a little bit of that buzz going nationally, which we haven't had for a couple years. You lose, you're right back at, you know, 7-6 and six now in the Andy Avalos era and questions coming in again from fans, probably whatever. I mean, from your perspective, is it 1 out of 12? Is it just to, hey, if whatever happens, you move on to the next one and the next one's just as important at New Mexico the next week? Or is there something about this first game that could uh, really set the tone for the season here? Yeah, I mean, you got to set the tone. You got to come out strong. You got to come out fast. Um, ultimately, the the game that's in front of you is the most important game, and this is a big time game. It starts the whole year off. It builds confidence, builds a mentality. It's a road, you know, a road win or loss, you know, whatever. But uh, it's huge. It's huge to start off the season and. Um, you know, I don't know how much those guys are putting the stakes, you know, how big the stakes are, but I, I want to say that Oregon State was six and zero at home last year. I don't know if I read that right, but six and zero at home and one and five on the road. Reeser Stadium. I mean, they they uh they're gonna be fighting to hold on to that too. I mean, I was a part of some time where protecting the blue is is a major thing. So I'm sure they have a mentality where they don't want anybody to come in here and mess up that six and zero record so far. And they just want to build off of that. So um, both teams are hungry. I'm sure it's going to be a heck of a battle out there and looking really forward to it. And, you know, hopefully the Broncos come home with a win and start their season off right and start gradually increasing and playing their best ball late in the season. Hey, if you're looking for a new concrete coating for your basement, your patio, uh, your garage, check out rowpaint.com. Uh, we've had some work done at our house, and it's uh, just a tremendous game changer in terms of upgrading the uh, look and quality of your uh, patio or that concrete service. So check them out, roepaint.com. If you're looking for a new vehicle, lift the Afford a Boise. Got my truck there two weeks ago. I'm loving it. Check them out. And how about this? If you're looking to sell your vehicle, they will buy your used car, even if you don't buy a new one from them. They will just take your uh, car and give you a cash offer on the spot. So go check them out. You will not be disappointed at Lift the Afford of Boise. Idaho Central Credit Union sponsors our road trip coverage. So we'll be heading on the road this weekend. Thanks to Idaho Central Credit Union. They're the official bank of Bronco Nation News. Make sure you check them out, uh, Idaho Central Credit Union. And, uh, you know, Blue and Orange Store, last but not least, we're doing this promo again. I got the uh, gift cards in my hand here. Blue and Orange Store, you can get free orders, $40 uh, or more. You get free shipping. Free shipping on any order over $40 or more online uh, at the Blue and Orange Store. You can check them out at the Boise Town Square Mall. And these gift cards, Winston, will work online. So uh, I said at the beginning of the show, if you came in late, you sign up today for a one-year subscription. You get not only a $25 gift card to the Blue and Orange Store or Pro Image, I'm also going to throw in a free round of golf at uh, Timberstone Golf Course. i got a couple of these left, so sign up today and you get a free round of golf and you get a free $25 gift card to the Blue and Orange Store that more than pays for your subscription by itself. So hopefully some folks will take advantage of that today. Just go to bronconationnews.com and, and uh, click that subscribe button, and we would love to have your business. Well, I'll have a – a subscriber-only story on George Solani up there this afternoon. So a lot of cool content. And uh, Winston, we appreciate your time today, man. We're, we're hoping we can connect Saturday after the game. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but uh, hopefully uh, on the post-game show after the game, Winston will jump on for 10 minutes or so and give us uh, his thoughts on uh, hopefully a Boise State win, right? A uh, big one on Saturday to kick off the season. September 3rd, let's go. Yeah, we're three days away or whatever. I'm actually heading out tomorrow evening uh, to Portland, and then I'll make it down to Corvallis on Friday. And, again, join us at Sky High Brewing there in downtown Corvallis, 4 to 8 on Friday if you're heading to town. But, uh, Winston, really appreciate it. We had great feedback about Monday's appearance and about all your shows. Uh, you saw the, the comment from Jordan, that uh, not to tell Prater or anybody, but you're, you've got the best show <laughs> now. So uh, we, we truly appreciate your time. You're, you're, a, you're a pro at this thing, man. I know you – not you know, not sure what your future holds in terms of coaching and whatever else, but uh, you, you've got a yeah. We'll keep on doing. We'll keep on doing a, some more of these and see what you've happens. Got a, uh, you've got a career in announcing here, so I just got to keep it kind of on the down low before uh, some some big time people get a whole, get get wind of this and they're going to hire you away from me. But uh, for ah. now, for now, man, uh, we, we love having you. We truly appreciate your time, and and we'll certainly be catching up with you. Hopefully after the game Saturday, but uh, next Wednesday to 
Uh, you know, fans are wanting you to break down game tape, by the way. So we'll see if we can figure something out and get some couple, maybe find a couple of clips that I can get figured out. And then we can maybe break down and pause and look at some game tape of maybe a, yeah. a key George Helani run next week or yeah, something. Can we try that. It. Yeah, we could probably do that. All right. Well, Hey, have a great rest of your week, Winston. We appreciate your time, man. And we will uh, talk to you next week. All right, BJ. We'll see you Bronco nation. There he is. Winston Venable, the Winston Venable show. Appreciate everybody for checking us out. Have a great rest of your day. Uh, 1 p.m. today, by the way, the Mountain West basketball schedule comes out. So we'll have full coverage of that at BroncoNationNews.com. Uh, who do we got today, by the way? We got uh, George Halani and Scott Matlock and Keith Bonifaz talking to the media today. And we'll get those up uh, on the YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe, smash the like button, all that great stuff on the YouTube channel. Have a great day. We'll talk to you later. This was the Winston Venable show. He is... Winston Venable, I am BJ Reigns. Have a great day. Go subscribe. Bronco Nation News, bronconationnews.com.